Hello, and welcome back to the Goat Cave Podcast. Before we jump into today's interview, I got a few things I'd love to chat with you guys about. So, uh, yeah, let's do that now. Um, as you guys know, this weekend, Money Talks is coming up. That's my BMX jam where I pay you to come and ride. Ride of the day takes home 50 bucks, some merch, and this year's awesome Golden Goat Award. Um, yeah, courtesy of the guys over at Shapeworks. Check them out if you guys need any uh, 3D printed things. They're the best for that. Um, yeah, but I'm just super excited to get the BMX community together, You know, especially after covid uh, and whatnot. That was just such a rough go for everybody, I think. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a couple other things to give away there too. So 50 bucks for, uh, the old school award. You'll also take home a trophy. So best old school trick. Um, and then we're going to have, I think $350 worth of money just to give away. So yeah, come on out and, uh, take some money, you know, do some tricks. It'd be rad. Um, yeah. This past week's ratings have been unbelievable. I just got to say, you know, huge thank you to you guys. You guys have blown me away so much. Um, yeah, I honestly can't thank you guys enough. We're actually eligible for monetization and everything now. Um, and yeah, we're really hoping to, you know, keep this train going. Um, welcome to all the new members of the GOAT family. Thank you guys for listening. We'll have more out soon. Um, We've also got a new video from last week, which was uh, the skate park roulette video. Round one is now out. Go check that out. It's uh, myself, Caleb Smith, Justin Parsons, Mike Kewen, and uh, Tanner Smith. It was a rad day um, of just riding. So, yeah, check that out. And obviously, if you guys haven't figured this out by now, uh, it's the end of live streams. We are now doing all the episodes pre recorded. Um, just unfortunately with the last one with Sean Mack, we ran into a couple problems and I've also been dealing with a few other problems within live streaming. So we've decided to just scrap that idea and, uh, yeah, we're just going to do them pre-recorded like this. So we might do some live, uh, eventually, but for now we're just going to stick with recorded. Um, but yeah, so let's, uh, let's welcome, um, Johnny Carbado. That's how you say your last name, right? How do you say it? It's uh, Cabardo. Cabardo. That makes yeah. sense. I don't know why I always mess that up. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Everyone does. Yeah. All good. Well, uh, thanks for coming in today and uh, chatting with us. Let's get this started with some BMX updates. So um, in the news, first of all, we got Nathan Williams, who's dropping a new video part. Nathan is an all-around legend, has been for years, you know, on top of the game. There's clips of him riding in Kitchener. Um, if it's not raining when we leave here, I'll, tef I'll definitely show you a spot that he's hit before. All right. Yeah. So uh, let's watch his leftovers from the video part that he's releasing. How's that sound? Sounds good, bro. All righty. Alrighty, so right away we got some awesome B-roll here. So for people that don't know, this, is a, this video part is actually one that you have to buy which is a little strange to see a web part that you have to buy. Um, but they're doing a raffle, so there is lots that you can win, right? Like, it's kind of worth it. And it was an independent project with uh, Christian Regal, who is literally the best filmer in BMX right now. Um, so I'm excited. I'm going to order it. Like, it's only 5 bucks. It's really hard not to want it, you know? So. Oh, that was sick. Yeah, that was an amazing ice pick, eh? That was crazy. Yeah, dude. And that was just a nollie over that, which is, like, so nuts still. I think they were saying it took them three years to film this project. Damn. Yeah. That's so gnarly to go yeah, over that dude. bench, eh? Especially with it, like, connected to the ground, because if you don't make it, you're going to yeah, eat it. Yeah, you're going to eat it. Bro. Yeah. Oh man, I would love to find a rail like that. You know, like a nice Same. roller coaster rail. Yeah, I've never ridden one. There's a there's a ledge kind of close to here that's like 
movable and you can put them together and do like mm. roller coaster grinds. I was trying a roller coaster 180 on them oh, a while back. So sick, bro. This is nuts. Dude. Like, Jesus. Those fucking parking bricks are so heavy, too. That's true. God damn. That bitch has no fucking clue what's going on. Yeah. One of the things that I what love about Nathan's, like, recent parts is just the fact that he brings his dog with him everywhere. That is so crazy, especially with the fucking donkey dick at oh, the El Toro. end of it. Yeah, a throwaway at El Toro. That is so nuts. Yeah, dude, I can't wait till like, the actual video comes out. It's going to be so sick. Yeah, I'm really excited for it. I can't wait. I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be well worth the five bucks, you yeah. know? Like, and it's also, it's one of those moments that in BMX, we're actually seeing a big change where things, you know, for the past couple of years have all been about Instagram and digital, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, that means that people like myself who make videos can't really make money, right? Like... A lot of that, like, I would love to just see how this goes. I think it'll work out really well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, some uh, some sad news. Swamp Fest will not be happening this year. Yeah, which, uh, yeah, confirmed by Mr. Trey Jones himself. Um, yeah, really upsetting. But obviously, you know, with the state of the world right now, it doesn't make sense to have people come all over the world just to ride this jam, especially when it's in Florida. And Florida is, like, one of the hot spots right now. Yeah. So, yeah, Swamp Fest 2021. Um, I'm hoping to be there. So maybe we'll see you guys there. I think he's saying that it's going to be the first weekend of April. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can all meet up then. But I should be there. Like, fingers crossed. Um, yeah. Have you ever wanted to go to Swamp Fest? Uh, yeah. Like, it's pretty sick, but I just... I don't think I could get there. <laughs> yeah, it's really expensive just to, you know, get down there for one. Like, yeah. if you're driving, it's only, I would say, you know, if you're able to save up like 500 bucks, you're probably good. But, you know, for your, yourself who's 16, it's a little hard, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so let's talk some uh, quick updates here. We got Demarcus Paul is now riding on GT, um, no longer with volume. Which, uh, that's really cool, man. GT is actually starting to really come up. Like, they've got some really good pros on there. Yeah. Um, and Ethan Corrier just released a frame promo with uh, Our BMX. So if you want a good laugh and also learn about his frame, definitely check that out. Ethan's a friend of the show. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, if you guys do, drop some goats in the uh, comments there. That would be rad. Cool. So uh, it's time for everybody's favorite segment here, Bill of the Week. If you're new here... Uh, these are all fan-submitted clips, and each week I sit down with a guest, and we pick out our favorite bail. It goes on to the finals, and at the end of the year, or uh, you know, in a couple months, we're going to pick out the winner, and they get a brand new pro model frame. Um, Johnny, you've actually participated in Bail yeah. of the Week a couple times, so it's kind of cool coming in afterwards. Eh? You kind of get to yeah. choose your bail this week. Yeah, watching everyone else's bails. Yeah, right? Um, cool. So let's start this off. We got uh, Liam M. first. So this kid's from Ottawa. Um, oh, yeah, I talk to this kid sometimes. He's pretty sick. Yeah, he's a really nice dude. He, uh, I posted something on Instagram a couple weeks ago when we were out riding, and he was like, is that Cabardo's bike? <laughs> I was like, it sure is. You're, like, famous on Instagram, eh? You got your, like, <laughs> yeah, 4K bunch, followers. That's DM pretty me. good, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll just pull this up and make it bigger, and we can watch it. All righty. So this is sent in from Liam M. Oh. I think we've all done that, though. Like, yeah, uh, I've done that a few times. Yeah, I've definitely, like, I've done that on Feeble 3s where, like, you just come off too quick. Yeah, and, and your front like, tire, like, yeah, hurts, yeah. Drag your front tire. That's the worst. Um, cool. So we'll move on from that one. We got Brad Cross, Kitchener Local. He uh, just moved back here from Mississauga, I believe. And this one's really cool. I don't know if you've ever seen this rail before, but this rail is uh, it's a legit rail. Like Jesse did it in Space Goats. Um, Dan Kauke has destroyed this rail because he's a rail god. So yeah, here we go. This oh, uh, yeah, yeah, this is. I went to this high school actually. So to like see that is pretty rad um 
I know the guy who was filming, and he was really sad that he ended up cutting the clip off a little yeah. early. But I wanted to do that reel. I passed by it like a few times, and I was just th- I was up there just looking at it. It's kind of scary though. It's pretty tall. That's the yeah. thing, right? I've always wanted to see somebody uh, here. I'll play this from the beginning. See where that ledge is up there? Mm-hmm. I've always wanted to see somebody start on the ledge and do the rail on the outside of oh, it. Oh, that'd be so sick. Yeah, that's like nobody does that, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, shout out to Brad for sending that in. Hopefully he does get that. I know that he wasn't able to pull it that night. He ended up getting like a flat or something. Um, and then this one's sent in from Jack H. Oof. Oof. That's like the worst is like rail ride whenever your front tire drops. Like yeah. I was trying a rail ride 360 at the odd on that big flat like square rail. And it's just one of those things that like if you push – and you're just leaned one way too much, you'll literally slide off. Yeah, it's like the scariest feeling. Oh, yeah. And there's nothing you can do to save it either, right? Yeah, it's just so quick. You don't have enough time to react. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this last one was sent in by a uh, Toronto homie, Devin BMX. Oh, Devin. So this is awesome. Oh, I think I know which one this yeah. is. Yeah, this kid's bails always make me laugh. He sent like 10 of them in all at once. <laughs> like, nice fucking nut shot, oh, eh? Oh, there goes your kids. <laughs> Oh, man. So uh, those are our four bales of the week. Um, what one do you like? What one do you want to pick this time? It's There's between, no bias. So pick whatever you want. Between the tire ride and Devon's. Yeah. Um, I'd probably have to say Devon's. I think Devon's is really good, you know. Oh, that was crazy. A nut, lost like, his kids. Yeah, there's always, you know, a nut shot almost always takes it because it is yeah. like, as dudes that it's ride painful. BMX, we've all been there. Yeah. So like, yeah, we all know. Um, yeah, Devin, you are our Bale of the Week champion. Thank you so much for uh, sending that in, and you've been entered to win a new frame. All right, clip of the week. We got uh, Chris Silva fakie whip clip. This was really cool. Um, Silva is an absolute Toronto legend, friend of the show. He listens constantly. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's play this clip for him real quick. Yeah, this is... Uh, Silva's unreal, dude. Seriously. I don't understand how you tail it backwards like... It's just confusing. Honestly, I think once you do a tail whip, you'll like you'll see because it's so actually sick. it's not that bad. I've tried them a couple times. Banks blow me away. Like I've tried it on quarters because you get like a good pop, mm-hmm. but a bank is like pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I just can't get my foot over the frame. It's just yeah, weird. Yeah, you'll get there, man. It takes a while. It took me fucking years to learn how to whip. One day. Yeah. Alrighty. Well. uh... Let's see what else we got going on here. So, actually, I think we're, uh, we're good to start the uh, interview here. But uh, before we do that, we're just going to play an ad really quick. So, uh, yeah, this is an ad from our friends over at Wonderland Studios. Hey, it's Wayne from Wonderland Studios. I'm a professional tattoo artist with 25 years experience at some of the best tattoo shops in the country. I've worked alongside some of the best tattoo artists in the industry, been able to really grow and expand my portfolio and my wealth of knowledge. We are one of the Tri-Cities premier tattoo studios. We focus on creating a unique tattoo for each client in a friendly, welcoming, professional environment. We work closely with the Board of Health to set the standards for cleanliness and safety. If tattoos are not your thing, our piercer deacon is fully accredited with the APP the Association of Professional Piercers, and is considered one of the region's top piercers, leading the charge in innovation and growth within the piercing community. If you want to learn more, you can follow us on YouTube at Wonderland Tattoo Studios. If you uh, want to check out my work, you can check it out on Instagram at Can't Contain the Wayne, or the check out the shop's Instagram at Wonderland Tattoo Studios, KW. Alrighty, and we're back after that ad. Today's guest is an up-and-coming Cambridge local who uh, is best known for his tech style with some fast-paced bangers in there as well. At the young age of 16, he is stepping up and proving that he is just as good as the older guys and sending very respectable tricks at legendary setups like his full cab down the Market Square 7 stair. He is one of the fastest progressing riders I've ever met who is learning new bangers every week. Johnny Cabardo, everyone. How are you, man? I'm feeling good, man. Hell yeah, we're uh, we're happy to have you on the show today. So let's uh, let's start this out by going as far back as we can remember for when you got into BMX. Ooh. So tell us a little bit about how you got started in BMX. Okay, so basically, like I live in an apartment. Like when I moved here, I lived in a, in a, in an apartment, and uh, 
I would like when I would go outside just to like walk around like the complex, there was like a bunch of kids on like BMXs and they were doing like bunny hops and stuff and I thought that was cool. So like I like started talking to them and they started like getting me into biking. So then I bought my first bike and I bought it off like Kijiji. It wasn't that good of a bike, but it was like it helped me progress. What uh, what bike was it? It was um I don't remember. It was like all custom, but I know that the frame was a Hutch web frame. Okay. And it was like blue. It was pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I wasn't sure if you started out with that Jake Seely that you had cuz that no. was a really nice bike. That was like my second uh second bike. Yeah, was that a complete bike that you picked up then, the Jake Seely or was that all like custom parts and everything? No, it was it was a complete. Nice. That's a good start though. Like it was when a good I bike. Yeah, when I got started, I was riding a Miraco um black pearl which i actually have uh the matching one in my closet just in there like it's a i had the white and green one but the one that i have is the year before i think um but yeah that was like you know getting a complete bike is an awesome way to start out i think most people yeah. if they get a complete you know you ride it for a couple months and then you'll change out like something big like the forks yeah. of the bars and that changes the whole feel of the bike right yeah. away right um yeah and you can really just make it yours after a little while because you have that jake seeley looking very good by the end of it like yeah the matching purple tires with the frame looked amazing i really liked that setup yeah yeah um so who were some of the riders that you looked up to when you were first getting started uh well definitely jake seeley because i had his bike and i just like searched him up he was pretty sick yeah i liked his like tech um i know ethan courier like he was like a big like inspiration to me yeah uh Jordan, I think it's Godwin. I think that's how you say it. Hell yeah. Yeah, he's fucking, he's insane. He's though. unreal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, probably Billy Perry. Yeah, Billy is really cool, man. He, uh, that dude is constantly doing something, you know, yeah. like all those vlogger dudes. I used to like really hate vlogs and then, you know, I actually started watching them and getting into them a little bit mm -hmm. and I completely get it now. Like it is one of those things that, you know, as somebody who is like, you know, started by watching BMX DVDs and whatnot, like, I don't know, it's cool to see kind of the backstory behind it. Yeah. Like I think it was sauce, the boss, when he was on the show, he had said that vlogs are basically just road pools on a budget and that like, opened my eyes so much to it because that's all it is realistically like yeah it makes a lot of sense um how did you like what did you get started you know watching when you uh you know first got a bike like what was you know how would you like get your bmx intake every day i guess oh um pretty much just like billy perry's like gopro vlogs yeah and like just like a f i'd search up like random bmx edits and i just watch them and i just go on instagram it just like inspired me to like keep riding and get better hell yeah yeah i think instagram plays a it plays a big role in like anybody that's your age right now yeah um when it comes to pretty much everything like but especially bmx and action sports you know because like all i think about when i go on instagram is like how the fuck can these people do these crazy tricks? And like, you know that it took them, you know, forever to get that trick, but it's one of those things that like, you're just watching banger after banger. Like yeah. you're literally like just flipping it through. It like inspires you to like yeah. go out and ride. Yeah. I think a big part of that too is the fact that most kids like your age, when you're first getting into it, you see constant bangers and you're like, yeah. oh, well, this is what BMX is. This is yeah. what I have to do. You're like, it's I want to like, learn this. Meanwhile, yeah, it takes fucking those dudes so long to get, right? Like, I I don't know, man. All the kids that I'm seeing nowadays are unreal. Like you, Sean, Devin, all of you guys are under 20 and just unreal on a bike, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think definitely like Instagram played a big role in that because you guys all have a pretty good following too. Yeah, so Devin's really sick though. Like he, he progresses so fast and he's like, his riding's just crazy. Like yeah, he's all like of his tricks are just 15 crazy. or so too, isn't he? Yeah. yeah, he's really young. Yeah, he's unreal. Um, Jeffrey Lapointe, he's oh nuts. yeah, him too. He's fucking, he's crazy. Yeah, just so unreal, man. Um, so let's talk about you know what most Canadians have done in the winter time, and uh, I think that that would be riding in the winter. You know, when I was young, I would go to the park in like March and we would shovel it clean just so that we could ride. You yeah, know? I do and that sometimes. That's the thing. Like you guys are totally following in those footsteps, but. 
you are fucking nuts because you just throw bangers in the middle of the winter. Like, yeah, dude. Yeah, some of the clips that you have filmed over the winter have been absolutely ridiculous. Like um, for a full cab, I was in like January. It was like minus four, and I biked all the way to the market set just yeah, to do it. Yeah, I'm gonna play that clip in a second. That was insane, man. Um, so, what do you think the hardest? Uh, you know, what was the hardest trick that you went for in the middle of the winter? Was it the full cab? Yeah, definitely that. Yeah. How many tries did that take? Um, surprisingly, it was the second try. Wow. I cannot believe that. That is fucking wild. Like, I kept half cabbing it because I couldn't, like, I couldn't get the, the balls to, like, actually send the full cab. But, like, yeah. Um, but when once you did I actually send it. felt like doing it, I, I just fully commit and I fell and then I, like, got back up and just did it right after. How bad was the first bail on that? Uh, it wasn't that bad. I just kind of like jumped off the side of my bike. Yeah. Scratched up my arm a little bit. Jesus. Um, let me find that. I had it saved, but I think it was saved from before. So I posted it a while ago. I think it was like... Yeah, I can find it pretty quickly here. Maybe like a month ago. Yeah. Yeah, it blew my mind. Is this it here? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Uh... We'll get that on the screen here. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah. yeah, this blew my fucking mind, dude. It was so clean, too. Like, the only way that you could have done it better is if you didn't ride into the pole afterwards. Yeah, but I even was that. I thinking about doing it again because, like, yeah. I, was just, I looked at the clip and I saw me, like, I saw me ride into the wall and I'm like, I don't know if people are going to count that. Oh, I would count it. But it I just didn't want to do it again after. Yeah. No, you don't want to really push it. Like, if you've landed it perfectly like that, that's fucking set. Yeah, I just, like, when I full cab, I go, like, to the right. Yeah. Like, I, I hop to the side, like, a lot. So, it's just weird. Yeah, that is seriously one of the best things that's ever been done at that stair set. So, fucking props to you, man. That takes Thanks, some dude. serious balls. Yeah, I want to five it once I get fives off things. Like, it'd be so sick. You could totally five that. It's like the perfect set for it too. Like, yeah. Um, for anybody that has never seen this set before, the way that it's set up is that uh, it's a seven stair, but it's way taller than it is like long. Like it's just a super steep seven stair. Like it's seriously the size of a four stair, but yeah. with seven it's stairs. Like squished. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, but it's the perfect set for like any tricks because it's got. Like a really good run up. The run out is actually pretty decent. Like yeah. you got like twenty five feet before the road, and yeah, like we've had jams there. We're gonna be there um, for the money talks jam. Can't wait for that. It's yeah, man. So sick. Let's hope you fucking throw that five. That would be unreal. <laughs> Dude, I wish. Yeah, I do not blame you for not wanting to do it yet. Like the full cab on that is fucking nuts. You gotta throw a bar in there. It'd be like full Garrett Reynolds, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude, I wonder if you could, because, like, watching this clip here, your bars are seriously, like, so far from yeah. you. Like, If I barred, like, the proper way, I probably could, but I, I bar topside, so it's, like, all weird for me. Oh, fair. Yeah, dude, well, fucking learn bars the other way, and you'll be able to do them down full cabs and shit. I'm trying. I've, <laughs> I've done one switch bar, but it was, like, really ugly. Yeah, fair enough. I can't bar spin at all, so trust me. Don't feel bad. Um... Something that blows my mind is that you will just hop on your bike and go, like, 20, 30 kilometers to fucking Guelph or, yeah, like, the other side of Waterloo, ride for the afternoon, and then bike home. Yeah. Um, where do you get the energy for that? Um, I don't really know. I just, like, the night before, I, I like, watched a bunch of, like, BMX edits to get me, like, hyped up. Yeah. And then I just, like... I don't know. I just wake up and I text my friends. I'm like, hey, yo, you want to go down to like Guelph or like Waterloo? And if they say, yeah, I'm just like, okay, let's go. That's sick, man. That's totally the attitude you need to have. Yeah, um, yeah that like, let's just fucking do it is perfect. That's the attitude you want. Yeah. Um, have you ever thought about doing like, I know that you somewhat do vlogs, but have you ever thought about like doing it seriously? Um, not really. I just thought about like doing it for fun. Sometimes. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think if you like, you know, saved up a bit of money. I want to get a up, GoPro so I can do yeah. like the Billy Perry like vlogs because those are sick. Yeah, I need to get a GoPro. I'm like, I'm already doing vlogs and whatnot, but to be able to do the ones where you're just riding through the streets and stuff yeah, would be I sick. I want to do those. Those are perfect those are for sick. Toronto. Like yeah. you're constantly in Toronto. That's like the thing to have, you know? Yeah. Um, let's see here. 
So as someone who came into BMX, um, you know, from scootering, but just to kind of correct that, you actually started riding BMX first, kind of dropped it for a while, got into scootering, and then came back. Yeah. What do you think scootering has done for your riding? Like, has it helped any aspects of it? Is yeah. there anything that plays into that? It, like, because on scootering, like, scooter riders won't really agree with me, but, like, in my opinion, I find it easier to commit to a trick like a bar spin because, like, if you feel like you're not going to catch it, you just push it away. Like, on a bike, you got, like, this big, like, 20.75 eh, 20. frame attached to you, so it's just, like, harder to bail. But, like, on a scooter, you can just bail easier. So, like, it helped me learn, like, to commit. Yeah. Uh, which is good. Because before, like, when I was just, like, riding my bike in 2018, I would just, like, go to do, like, a 180 down um, a four stair. And I'd get, like, so scared because it was a drop and I didn't want to eat shit. But, like, on a scooter, I could do it any day. Like, I could three that set. So, like, it just helped me commit. And it helped me learn bars because it was easier to, like, as I said, it's easier to bail. So it was easier for me to, like, commit to getting a bar spin. And then I kept doing bars on my scooter. And then I learned them on my bike, like, a couple months later. And I just, like, fell back in love with biking. Hell yeah. I think a big part that plays into that, too, is that, like, you know, on a scooter, bar spins are, like, super easy, right? Because the bars are so small. And it really gets you to, like... I don't know. It's really easy to transfer that into BMX because it's the same motion. It's literally the exact same except you're doing it on a bigger, like, setup, right? Yeah. Um, And I like what you said there about, like, you know, within BMX, it's pretty difficult to actually bail out. Like, if you're going to bail, typically you're going to eat it and it's going to suck. Like, Yeah, I've eaten it a few times. Yeah. Like, uh, the up rail. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Trust me. I want to talk about that. That clip's going to be hilarious. Um, But, yeah, I think, like, you know, there's definitely a lot of things that you can take away from scootering and put them in to BMX. Um, what are a few things that were way different, like um, transferring from scooter to biking? Definitely uh, rail grinds. Like on a scooter, um, like I've I've never did a I've never done a board slide on a skateboard, but like you're more on the rail. Like it like it's kind of like a crank arm. Yeah, but I can't crank arm, but it's kind of like that. So yeah, like. Grinding a rail on a scooter, you're on the rail, but on a bike, like you're still on the rail, but you're on your pegs usually. Because like I don't yeah. have crank arms, so yeah. Yeah, and I think with that too, when you're on your pegs, it's a little different because you have to yeah, like, like balance. You point. have to counterbalance, right? Like yeah. um, on a scooter, you just kind of like stand on it and just like try and keep your balance. But on a bike, it's just the balance is just different. Yeah, I've definitely seen my fair share of uh, clips of dudes on scooters fucking eating it yeah. on handrails and stuff. Like but, face first into the ground. Yeah, and I think that's the weird thing too, right, is that like with scootering, you're in such a weird stance that like if you're going down, you're pretty much going straight down to your face. Like at yeah. least you can kind of get out of it because on a bike, like there's really no way most of the time. There's no saving yourself. Yeah, but I've seen so many, like, scooter riders, you know. There's a clip that was, like, super famous on uh, Tosh.0. I don't know if you've ever seen that show before. No. Um, but it's, like, a commentary show where the guy basically just watches, like, clips um, from the internet. And the one is this kid doing a bar spin down this, like, probably, like, 15 or 16 stair on a scooter. And when he lands, the fucking front of the scooter just snaps. And, like, literally, he just goes... He's, like, hanging on to it like this, literally just right down to his face. Like, no, there's no way that he could have reacted to it at all, right? so fucked. Yeah, it's scary as shit. And I think that that's, like, you know, with scootering, there's really not much that's holding it together, right? Like, if you end up breaking it, it's going to snap most of the time. Yeah, usually. Did you ever snap any decks? Um, no, I've snapped bars before. Yeah. It was fucking scary. Yeah. I went to bar the spine. And I landed it, right? And as soon as I get out of the bowl, I go to do, like, a tail whip, and my bar just snaps, and I'm just, like, holding on, and I go like this. Oh, my I just God. Go like, I just yeah. fall right back to the ground, and it hurts so much, but it was scary, because, like, I didn't expect it. I just went up, and it just snapped. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, moving away from scootering a little bit here, how did you meet Anthony from Harvester Bikes? Also, I think Ant would really love that shirt, so uh, good job for oh, you yeah. wearing it today. <laughs> <laughs> um so i met anthony like through instagram um so i had these like 
I met these guys at Joyride. Their friend, their names were um, Dylan and Dawson, and it was when I was like poop at biking. Yeah. <laughs> so I couldn't really do much, and they like taught me how to do some tricks. All right, and um, then they started like talking about their old friend that was in a coma, and I like kind of overheard them talking, and I was like, like we start, we had a conversation about him. And then I searched him up on Instagram when I got home, and I figured out he was actually such a sick rider. Yeah. And then when he, like, went through his surgery or whatever, and he, like, he like finished it, I hit him up, and I was like, hey, yo, I come down to Toronto sometimes. If I come down, would you want to ride? And he's like, yeah. And I came down in, like, I rode Toronto for the first time in, like, May of last year, and it was just such a good time. Like, he's a good rider. Uh, he's What's got his a name? Good personality, like his full name. Yeah, it's uh, Anthony Reed. Okay. Yeah, and um, it was just a good time. He's such a good rider. Yeah, he's fun to be around, and he's uh, he's a good filmer too. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, that's sick. Um, yeah, that's rad, man. And that's Anthony Reed, like a bike rider, right? Yeah, not like the he, not yeah. Anthony that owns Harvester no. Bikes. No, I've never ridden with Ant. Yeah, have like, you? I want to. How like when did you first meet Ant from Harvester Bikes? Though, have, oh. do you ever really met him or not really? Uh, I have. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Anthony from Toronto, he uh, messaged me and he's like, "Yo, you should go to Harvester because I I think I broke like I broke something on my bike. Yeah, right, on my back wheel, and um, I was like, "Fuck it, why not?" So I went to Harvester, and he was like, "I, I met Ant there because he was working there." And he's just such a nice guy. Yeah. And he, like, hooked me up with, like, a wheel and, like, a chain and, like, all that. And it was just a really, really good day. Yeah. Hell yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to any of uh, Ant's, like, jams that he does. I don't know if he did one last year. Yeah, he did a few last year. Yeah. I I didn't know about the shop at that time. Right. But now I do. So, like, I'm just waiting because I don't think there's going to be any this year. Probably not. Because of COVID, but, like, next year. Yeah, and I think, like, even, you know, with me doing a jam this year, like, I'm risking it. I'm yeah. making it, like, you know, 100 people are, can go, and if any more than 100 people show up, well, I'm sorry. Like, I can't take the risk, you know? Like, yeah. that's as many people as we can get. So, um, but, yeah, Ant from Harvester Bikes, I first met him years ago when I worked at a bike shop. And uh, what I basically had had happen is that uh, the bike shop I was working at, the BMX distributor 10-pack had closed down. So that shop no longer could get BMX. They could only get, like, stuff from Haro and stuff from, uh, like, Premium. And that's it. And I really didn't want to have to buy either or. Mm -hmm. And a few of my friends had started buying from Harvester. And uh, I sent him a message, and he totally hooked me up right out of the gate. He was like, you know, I know how much those frames are, Mm -hmm. and, like, I'm going to fully work with you on that. And I ended up getting my BSD beverage frame. It's over there on that wall. Um, Wait, which one? It's the one closer to the door, like underneath the Futurama painting. That one, I got that one for a ridiculous deal. I'm not allowed to say, but uh, it was a very, very good deal. And I don't know, since then, Ant has always really, really helped me out. And uh, yeah, like, you know. He's a really nice guy. Yeah, he's always been, like, super down with uh, the podcast and all the stuff that I make. Like, he came out for the Space Goats premiere, watched the video. Um, he gives away, like, my stickers and flyers and all of his online orders. He also uh, just bought airtime on the show. So um, the next episode with Dan Foley, we're going to have a Harvester Bikes ad in there, which I'm super excited for. Um, but, yeah, Ant is, like, top, like, you know, yeah. top dude. He is 100% so rad. Um, and he absolutely loves your riding and everything, too. He thinks yeah. that, like, you're unreal on a bike. Yeah, I remember, you know? like, the first or yeah, the first time I came in, he was just like, hey, you're that kid from Instagram. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, your clips are crazy. And I'm like, thanks. And then when I went to get my, uh, I think it was either when I went to get my volume cranks on or when I got my BSD frame, because uh, I sent him the, 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 uh, the full cab, like, before I posted it. And he was just like, we had a whole conversation about that. Yeah. And he was like so impressed. Yeah. That full cab, you actually sent me that 
back in like January. Yeah, because I was gonna use it for an edit, but like if I want to, if I'm making an edit, I want to film it like on an actual camera because I was yeah. just gonna make it on my phone, but like I just rather do it on an actual camera. Yeah, and like I'm fully willing to work with you to make an edit. Like if that's what you want to do, yeah, we'll I'd do it. Down. We'll make it happen. Um, yeah, I think that that's the way to go. Like I think because you can always post like you know those clips on Instagram. And they'll be awesome, but unfortunately, people forget that shit pretty yeah. quickly. Because, like, like, it's, like, I'll yeah. do a full cab down the set, and then, like, they'll just, like, keep scrolling, and then they'll see, like, I don't know, someone do, like, a seven cab down the That's set. That's the thing, right? Like, but I think that anybody that knows that spot, like, anybody local here, they'll know yeah. about it. But, like, I think a full-time, like, actual edit that you put, like, a lot of effort into, honestly, man, you could probably get sponsored like i fully think that you could get picked up by some company Dude, that um, is so sick yeah it's all about pushing yourself you know like yeah. there's a lot of kids out there that are unreal that they just don't have that access right they don't have yeah. people that are willing to film them or edit them and like that plays such a big role in that but i think that like if you put in the effort you could 100 percent like be sponsored within the next couple of years especially with the way that you progress on a bike yeah um so how did you break your Sunday frame? Because you actually rode that for quite a while. You yeah, did. You years. rode that all the way through the winter as well. You full yep. capped that set in the middle of fucking January <laughs> with that. Yep. Um, so basically, me and my friends were riding around like downtown Cambridge, and we found this roof drop about like wasn't even that high. It was like maybe like the size of me, so it wasn't that high. It was like five two. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to three it. So I just like, cause we were going to film it for like Instagram and I just like rode off it just to like get a feel for it. And when I rode off, I just hear like a big, like clink sound. Oh I my look God. Down and my frames just like cracked open and I'm like, holy shit. I just cracked my frame. Like I literally freaked out. Yeah. It was crazy. That is so wild. I still like, rode for the rest of the day. Yeah, I know. And it literally was hanging. Yeah, like, was you could like going move up it down. up and down. Jesus, man. That is so wild. Um, yeah, that is like the scariest thing is to snap a frame. I've only ever cracked them, but like, dude, like snapping a fucking tube on it is terrifying. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was crazy. Yeah, one of my buddies, he uh, he was riding around and his bike was making weird sounds. And I'm like... I literally walk over and I look and the down tube is like moving up and down whenever he's pedaling. Yeah, dude, like when I rode that Jesus. day before it snapped, I was just like, cause we, we met at the skate park and I didn't know what it was. I was just riding around. I was doing like 180s and stuff. And every time I like half cab, it sounded like my bars were moving and I, I didn't know what it was. I yeah. Kept, I kept looking like all over. I looked at my frame and nothing was like, nothing seemed like wrong yeah and then i we just go out to ride street and it snaps yeah i think if you had done like a drop smaller you probably would have cracked it yeah but that like harsh impact probably what did it in and you're lucky that you weigh like 100 pounds because yeah. dude if you were like you know my weight like 170 pounds you would have fucking snapped yeah. the top tube as well like it was already cracked before but i, di I didn't know like yeah if you go into like my story highlights i think i have like a a video of me like zooming in on the crack I didn't know if it was a crack or not. I thought it was just a paint chip. And that's what yeah. like, everyone at the skate park was saying. Like, I'd go up to people and I'd be like, do you think this is a crack? And they'd be like, no. And then, like, I would just go home and stare at it just confused because yeah. I didn't know. Because where it was cracked, the paint was also chipping. So I didn't know. And then it just broke. Yeah, I think we've all, like, anybody that's broken a frame or, like, multiple frames. Because I've broke, I think, five or six frames. I want to say six, and each of them, it was like you know a crack in the down tube or the top tube. I've only ever broken one. So. Yeah, well, you're still like starting out too, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any time that I broke one, like my first thought was, okay, was this a paint chip or not? And then like you know, you really start looking into it, and yeah, typically one day it just breaks on you. Yeah. Oh man. Well, uh, and like you know, obviously us talking about this we are not talking shit on sunday no. i just i need to say sunday's that a now good brand. sunday's amazing and you rode that frame for three years yeah everything breaks yeah like, everything breaks like literally everything breaks i always get kids that like you know like oh i don't want to ride that brand yeah, anymore because like, of that like you talk about like i don't know you say like one brand and then they're just like Egh. 
Yeah, and it's like, you know, there's definitely brands that I will not ride because I've had, like, bad experiences with yeah, their same. products. I'm not going to name them off, and I'm definitely not going to, like, you know, tell people not to ride it. It's mainly just the way that I ride. It doesn't work with my yeah, style of riding. It doesn't feel comfortable. Yeah, exactly. Um, so another question I got for you. Have you always rode a coaster? I feel like I've only ever seen you riding a coaster. No. No? So I started off on cassette, and when I got my Sunday, like, my street sweeper, yeah. uh, the coaster came with no slack, and I didn't know, like, that's how a coaster came. Like, I thought it came with slack, and I didn't, actually, I didn't even know what slack was, so I thought it was supposed to be like that. So it was pretty much a cassette. Like, I was using it as a cassette. Like, I was using pedal pressure to turn around and all that. Yeah. And then Keith, he came to the skate park one day, and I was on my scooter because... I had started, like, switching back to scootering again because I was just getting sick because my friend, he had a free coaster. Yeah. And his, like, he didn't have to pedal back. And I was, like, kind of jealous because his actually worked like a free coaster. And because I didn't know they were supposed to be adjusted. Yeah. And then I rode Keith's bike and I was like, wait, yours doesn't pedal back. And he was like, yeah, because it's a free coaster. And I'm like, I have one that pedals back. And he's like, "Um, let me have a look at it. And I brought it to the skate park. And he, like, fixed it for me. He, like, added slack. Yeah, you, like, then, pulled out one of the washers, yeah, probably. I was so hyped. Like, yeah. I, it was a free coaster for once. Yeah, that's funny, eh? Um, when I first started riding, I had a cassette. And, like, this is when free coasters had literally just started becoming a thing. Like, they had been around, but there had not been a nine-tooth driver version yet. Like, Oh, really? Yeah, this is back when, like, Odyssey and KHE were making the first, like, coasters. And the Odyssey coaster had a 12-tooth driver on it. Oh, shit. Um, but when I had got, you know, my first, like, true BMX, um, KHE had came out with the Geisha Street free coaster. And uh, I had picked up that one and rode it. And I had, like... It was set up like a cassette. Like, that was the main thing where, like, you move your feet the slightest bit at all and it'll start pedaling backwards. But something I didn't know for, like, the first six months of riding with it is that you're actually supposed to do, like, you know, like a half it, crank. Right? Yeah. yeah, you have to do a half crank backwards first. Yeah, it keeps changing, eh? <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't realize that you have to do, like, a half crank backwards, you know? And then when I once I figured that out and we had taken a couple spacers out of it, it had felt so much better. But yeah. I don't know. I, like, quickly changed back to a cassette. Cassette is just the way that I ride. Like, I can't do a coaster. Like, I hopped on somebody's bike the other day that had a coaster and, like, instantly, like, hit <laughs> yeah, my knee on the knee, stem. Yeah. yeah. But you get used to it after a while. Yeah, I think it's because I ride a... Ride a cassette, and I ride a profile. Yeah, so it's like it's are like literally, loud and they're like yeah, instant engagement. Yeah, yeah. I've had my profile elite for like probably five or six years now. It's a great hub. I've yeah. really had no issues. I broke an axle on it, and I broke a couple bolts, but that's like you know, obviously that'll happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, do you think you would ever actually ride cassette, or is coaster just like the way for you? Um. I was actually thinking about switching back to cassette because, like, I've just had bad luck with coasters, like, because well, I didn't know how to maintain them. Like, yep. I, I thought that when it comes loose, you tighten the fuck out of the driver. But, like, yeah, no. no, it's finger tight. Yeah. Um, And I used to, like, tighten it as much as I could. I used to, like, grab, like, this big-ass pipe wrench and I'd stand on it. Yeah. Um, But, yeah, now that I actually know how to, like, Work on it, them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I think I might stay with coaster, but, like... I do miss cassette. Like I kind of like like the noise. Yeah. And um, the instant engagement, but pedal pressure time, can be nice too. Yeah. You know. But at the same time, like, fakey bars and like full cabs. Like full cabs are apparently easier, but I can't do them on. Yeah, cassette. they're way easier on a cassette. And like fakey bars, I don't know. They just. I feel it's, like I couldn't do it on cassette. It's harder to do like fakey tricks because your feet have to be in the right yeah. place. But if like once you it. get it. You can, like, use your engagement to really, like, you know, pop yourself yeah. up and, like, toss them. Um, I would recommend that, like, over the winter, like, I don't know how often you'll be riding this winter, but maybe try riding with a cassette at, like, indoor parks and whatnot and just get used to that feeling. Yeah. Because my buddy Nick, what he does is he uh, he has multiple different bike parts at home that he'll just throw on whenever he feels like doing that. So, like... That's what I might do. I might get a cassette so, like... Like, uh, yeah, 
if I want to ride cassette one day, I can ride cassette. Like, well, yeah, especially that. if you want to ride like dirt jumps and yeah, stuff, dirt right? Jumps. Dirt jumps are like you want that engagement. You want to be able to pedal fast at stuff. Yeah. Um, I would recommend, you know, getting a cassette wheel and getting a free coaster wheel. My buddy Nick does that. He's got a cassette wheel, a free coaster just, wheel. Like, switch it up. He's got normal forks, front brake forks. He's got like, you know, the spring fields for his actual bike to run brakes. Like just he constantly is changing it up. Yeah. And that seems to be like really rad for him. He really likes doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do that, like riding, like it can't get boring. Cause that's the thing. If you get bored of like brakeless, you can like put on like some front brakes and do like, I don't know what that trick's called. Where you like nose stall picks and, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. You, like nose picks. Yeah. I've, uh, I'm really loving my front brakes. Like I have to get a lot better on them, but I'm liking it so far. Like it's been really fun. I want to learn like, you know, like hurricanes which is a 180 back wheel and then like a 360 oh, i want to learn 540 hurricanes but then land like on the nose on the coping oh that'd be like, sick that would be super crazy right yeah yeah that's uh that's on my list um yeah moving on from that earlier we were talking about uh you know different skate parks in ontario um this is when we were on our way here but you had said you haven't really been to too many eh no how many parks do you think you've been to? Um, probably like five or six. Not even that. Really? Many. Wow. Yeah, I'm just I just like riding street more because when I go to parks, just a lot of things like annoy me. Like, you know, <laughs> uh, when you're just riding around, you get like snaked by like a three year old on like yeah three wheel scooters, um, and they just get boring after a while because it's just the same thing. Yeah, I can completely agree. Like, I really like parks, and I've been to a bunch of different parks, but I think one of the things that I love about street riding so much is that you don't even have to, like, find a spot. It's literally just the adventure of, like, yeah. you know, biking around and looking is, like, just such a big... It's satisfying. Yeah. I don't know why. It's just, like... Like, when I go to Guelph, um, I actually enjoy the ride there sometimes because, I don't know, it's just biking places. It's just fun. Yeah. What uh, What park do you think is, like your favorite out of the parks that you have been to like you know you ride riverside a lot but i think that's just because it's your local park probably like either Guelph skate park or um that one in richmond hill uh wilcox oh yeah wilcox is really good i haven't been there yet but i want to carve the uh i've been there big bull corner thing like the um oververt that looks really rad yeah yeah you should check out uh They've got some amazing parks in London. Like, London, Ontario has some insane parks. Um, have you ever rode the Markham Park? Um, it's near Joyride. Oh, yeah. I rode it once waiting for, like, Joyride to open. Nice. Um, all I can say is the ramps are huge. <laughs> yeah. It's fun, eh? Yeah. They're pretty gnarly. Um, it's like the the Vert Park in Joyride. But yeah. Like, concrete. Yeah. And you, you've you rode Waterloo Park and like a few other parks as well in town. Yeah. Um, have you ever rode the one in Guelph where it's not like Guelph Skate Park, but it's a small like little street park thing? Oh, I've been looking for that spot. I, I can't find it. Oh, I can send you the pen for it. It's super right. fun. Yeah. We uh we went and rode that in one of my vlogs. Yeah, and it's like a lot of fun. You snapped your axle or something like that, right? Yeah. I snapped an axle there like years ago. And then we went there recently, and I did, like, a fufanu there, um, a nice tabletop on the, like, super small quarter. I love those super small, tight, like, transition quarters. Mm -hmm. Those are really cool. There's a spot that uh, I have to go this year, um, but I'll definitely take you there. Have you ever heard of the Christie Dam? Uh, Didn't, like, Jesse flare that? No. Or am I thinking of somewhere else? So the dam is in uh it's near hamilton but it's basically like 200 feet where it's like just a quarter pipe on one side with like a big like slant wall on the other almost oh i don't think i've ever heard of it yeah i'll show you some clips of it and uh yeah you'll want to go but when when my crew and i go we'll definitely stop in cambridge and grab you because it's like right on the way um yeah it'd be rad though is there any parks in ontario that you would want to go to um I don't really know. Yeah, I feel like you gotta, like, you I have to take a look and figure more. it out. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, Toronto and London has like amazing street. Kitchener obviously has good street, but that's pretty local. Um, 
St. Catharines and like Niagara region, they actually have like some okay spots. That's like where mm-hmm. the food dudes are from, right? So they've wrote a lot of that. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, moving on from that. Let's see. So we didn't really talk about like some of your favorite riders right now. We had talked a little bit about like some people that have inspired you, but if you had to name off like a couple local riders that are your favorite and a couple pros, who would they be? Um, local, uh, the first one would probably be Jesse. I don't know how to say his last name. I don't want to like butcher his last name. Dzikowicz. Yeah. He's fucking crazy, bro. Yeah. Jesse's unreal. Um, honestly, I don't really know a lot of other local riders. I know like Keith is also really good. Yeah. Keith's uh, really good. So is, uh, Clayton. He's He's fucking sick too. Yeah, he does like a lot fucking, of break tricks, dude. Big cock. We all love big cock. He's <laughs> Is that hilarious. What you call him? Yeah, we used to call him uh, blowjob years oh, ago because we were just so mean to him. But uh, I just like you know, one day I was like, you know what? Fuck this. This dude has put up with so much hate. We're calling him Big Cock from now on because you can't get mad if your nickname is Big Cock. Like, yeah, that's it's true. so good. Yeah, Clayton's awesome. I love Clayton. He's seriously like one of the dudes that. Uh, he is really stepping his game up this year. Like his yeah. riding has really progressed in the last two years. Um, before that, it took him years to learn anything, and he just, you know, he was kind of a puss. Like when it came to, you know, stuff that like everybody could see that he could do, but he would just not try it. He would literally shut down and didn't, would not do it. That was me in like 2018. I was just scared. I to think do we everything. all go through a phase like that where like we yeah. just don't want to get hurt. You don't want to deal with that, or like you know, you just don't have that confidence yet. I think it really yeah. takes like one good thing. Like if you can do one crazy thing it'll open up so many other things yeah. right away. Yeah, Clayton's awesome. Um, yeah, you got to meet Justin, like Justin Parsons and a couple oh, of those yeah. dudes. Yeah, He's like a mini Stevie Churchill. <laughs> Literally, dude. Yeah, he's unreal. I think that you look like fucking mini John Hicks more than anything. <laughs> dude, that's what everyone says. I go to the skate park, yeah. and they're like, hey, yo, what's up? It's John Hicks. Literally, man. Oh, it's so funny. Um Cool. So let's talk about uh, some of your clips on Instagram here. So we kind of already covered the market full cab. Um, I would love to talk about the roof drop crash at Riverside. Oof. So I'll pull that clip up because that was uh, that went into the runnings for bail of the week. Like you almost won with that clip, which is insane. So yeah, that was the death of me. Yeah, let me pull that footage up really quick. I think that might have been what cracked my frame because that night I noticed that there was a crack on my head tube. Oh wow! So I think that's what cracked it. But I don't, I don't really know. Yeah, there's probably a good chance of that. Because um, I did feel some flex in my front end when I yeah, fell when off. Yeah, you landed. <laughs> I didn't really land. I just kind of just... Yeah, you ate peeled. it pretty fucking hard. It was, uh, that's one of my favorite clips, though. I don't know why. Dude, I hit my head on the ground. Like, it was so fucked. Yeah. If I do that again, I'm wearing a helmet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would love to discuss that in a couple minutes. But let's... Uh... Pull this up here. There we go. All right, so here we go. Dude, it took me like 40 run-ups. Jesus. So how hard did you hit your head there? Did you, Uh, like, just miss it, or did you hit your head? I hit my head. It was was pretty hard. Oof. Yeah, and, like, you can tell that you kind of did. Yeah, that's a weird one. I think you literally just, like, you were way too in the middle of the bike. Like, had you leaned yeah. forward a little bit and more, just, you like, would have been fine. The run-up, I don't know. It's just, like, it's hard to get speed. Like, when I do drops, I like going at it with speed because, like, when I go slow, I always fall off. Yeah. If I, I would have went faster, I probably would have landed it, and I just didn't lean back enough. Like, I wasn't prepared for the fall. Like, you can see when I'm in the air, I'm, like, pretty much centered, like, yeah, I wasn't prepared. Yeah, completely fair. Um, I think we've all kind of, uh, we've all done something similar. Like whenever I do roof drops, I'm the same way. I need as much speed as I can get yeah. just because I want to make sure that like, I always think of it as like, you know, if you're going to like land, you don't want to just, you know, go straight down because yeah. that's going to suck. But if you're moving forwards and going down, it's going to be easier for yeah, you to actually to roll pull away. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, but I like, love... if I do that again, I feel like, uh, well, I'm definitely going to wear a helmet. Yeah. But I'm probably, 
I don't know if I will do it again, but I pro- I'll probably go from like you see how there's like a bigger roof. Like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm probably gonna go from that drop onto the smaller roof so I can get more speed. Cause it's just just from the smaller roof. Um, I personally think there's not enough speed. Like one of my friends on a scooter did it. Yeah. Like that's a scooter. So I have um, a buddy who did it years ago. Like it's been done, but he did it into the grass on the other side. He didn't do it onto the concrete, like down there. You think any bikers ever done it onto the? Oh concrete? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been right. done for sure. I don't Apparently know who's done it. Read it. I could see that, but I'll be honest. I don't. I would need to hear a name first. Like I believe that it's been threed, but I'm also kind of like, it really depends because we all have like. Yeah. There is some stuff that has been said at like every single park that is one of those things where it's just believable, but it probably didn't happen. Yeah, um, yeah one of them was at the uh, the Kitchener Auditorium. This one, it's not actually like a trick that was done. It's a story that I've heard for years, and that like people have backed up, but I'm still kind of like I don't know about that. So you know how uh, all these parks they have like. You know, the cops that come by and check on everybody, right, on the dirt bikes. I don't know if you guys have that in Kitchener or uh, in Cambridge at all. No, we just got the people on, like, the SUVs. Okay, so the in Kitchener, a few years back, they had, like, bylaw officers on electric motorcycles so that you couldn't hear them. They would roll up and make sure people weren't, like, smoking pot or anything. Well, the one day, they fucking show up, and uh, they pull up right behind the quarter pipe, and there's a couple people back there hitting a bong, and... uh, apparently the cop fucking was like, I'm going to take all your weed if you don't let me have a hit of that. (laughs) And then apparently he fucking hit their bong, coughed like a bitch, and left. And I was like, I don't believe that, but I also kind of do. Yeah, it's kind of believable, but that's the thing. And like a couple of people have backed it up, but I don't know if it was like if they were actually there or if they had friends tell them that and they believe it. It's probably just like like a rumor going around. That's the thing. It's one of those rumors that like, Every park has that, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's move on from that to the infamous new Johnny crash, the up rail clip. Ooh. I want to talk about this. So uh, I'll pull this up really quickly. Newest, this is your uh, newest post on Instagram, yeah, I believe. Newest crash. Yeah. All righty. So. It's a trendy edit. <laughs> yeah. There's some good clips in here, though. Yeah. Oh, that one, like, fucked my wrist. The first one? Oh, there you go. Jesus. Oof, that's so rough. Yeah, this, like, line right there is one of my favorites. Is that uh, snake run in the back there? Yeah, I love hitting that. So who were you riding with this day? Because I know Josh was there, like, little Josh. Yeah, I was riding with uh, Josh... Uh, Aaron, Anthony, and my friend Eric. Nice. That's rad, man. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the, uh, the up rail crash. So you posted at the beginning of this. We'll play it again. What happened here? Um, I don't know. I just, as I was going down the ramp, I had this sketchy feeling that I was going to fall. Yeah, but I st- I was like, you're too committed at that point. Like, yeah, you're already going. For I was it. literally like right in front of the rail, about to hop, and I'm like, I don't care. I'm just gonna do it. And uh, my back peg, like, it got both pegs got on, but I was like, as soon as you get on that rail, because it's such a high hop, you're already leaning off of it. Yeah. So like, I had like this weird like balance point, and my back peg slipped off, and it caught like the uh, the uh, what's it called the support of the rail. Yeah. And I just like. Like, I just went full dick on stem. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so not the place to fucking end up, eh? Dude, um, I was in so much pain. Like, I couldn't sit down. I couldn't walk. I was just laying down. I have... the next thing you know, I, like, I I check, and I just see blood, and I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) Oh, it fucking sucks, dude. Yeah, that's rough. Hopefully your fucking dinger is okay. Definitely don't want to lose that at the young age of 16. Um... But there's a similar clip that I fucking had at Guelph. And actually, we didn't film it, but it was a similar thing where... uh, Okay, so at the beginning of uh, the park here, like, where you kind of started, where you roll in over here, Mm -hmm. 
that quarter there. So that quarter pipe back there, um, Jesse and I were playing a game of bike at Guelph Park the one day. And uh, we had just started setting, like, tricks down that gap. And uh, I think he set half cab. And I think I just half cabbed into it because I'm on a co- or a cassette, so it's mm-hmm. a little different. And then I set 360 down it. He did a three down it. Um, we did, like, 180 down it. And then he set a bar down it. And I can't bar. And I was like, well, fuck you then. <laughs> And uh, I actually tried to tail whip down it. And I got, dude, I fucking literally whipped it the whole way around, went to put my feet on and uh, slipped my front foot and then my back foot, which is Mm. like I always catch frame with it, didn't catch the frame. And I ended up landing with my fucking ball bag, dude, my ball bag on my fucking tire. And then it went forwards. And, uh, dude, my fucking danger hurt. Like, I literally, yeah, it literally like. I didn't ride for the rest of the day. Like I was done at that it's point. It's always falls like that. Like it's just so annoying because you can still ride, but it just hurts. Yeah, it was rough. That's for sure. Like I definitely did not appreciate that. Um, I do like the one comment in here. Let me uh, let me pull that Which back one? up. The, the DIY. <laughs> that's pretty good. DIY vasectomy. <laughs> I love that. Um, you had said somebody had put penis delete us. Yeah, it's like that. all the way up somewhere there. Let's see. Fucking Josh. Uh, Aaron commented it. Okay. That's funny. Aaron's fucking hilarious. Nice. He got another like right there. Live penis on the show, deletus. Aaron. Comment of the year. So good. Yeah, that was uh that was rad. Um so how did you get into like that taste of music? Like, is that something, you know, strictly from BMX or is that, you know, Something that uh, you kind of got into on your own. Um, so, like, there was, like, a bunch of people I followed on Instagram. And they made, like, edits kind of like mine with, like, the music. And I thought it was just sick. And I just liked that type of music. And I wanted to make edits like them. So I just started trying to edit my videos like that. Hell, yeah. Honestly, that's a good way to go about it for, uh, like, you know, if you're into that music and you're into those types of, like, videos, do it. Because you can end up, like... You know, you've definitely got a good following on Instagram, and it's because yeah. your footage is like awesome, and you've also got music that people are really into at the moment. You yeah. know, like uh, the guy that got me into making edits like this, he's, he's uh, he got sponsored by Animal. Oh, that's sick. Uh, he's his Insta is like Nate Morrison or something like that. He's he's such a sick rider, like he can truck off things. He's fucking insane. That's rad, man. Yeah. Um, Animal is, like, the company to be sponsored by. They're fucking yeah. rad. Animal is such a sick team. Yeah. Like, they do, like, huge gaps, and they're just, like... Animal is the definition of street. Oh, yeah. Like, one of the first BMX videos I've ever watched was... Uh, it's a YouTube video. It's called Animal Road Trip, and it's from, like, 14 years ago on YouTube. Jeez. And uh, I instantly, like, fell in love with BMX at that point, just because the music was, like, just fucking, like you know, rap beats or like hip hop beats. Yeah. No vocals at all. Um, the beginning of it is in black and white, which is really weird. And then there's a couple other, like, it was just a really interesting video. Like it's literally all about the riding and it just seemed like such a cool video. Um, but yeah, let's move on from that. So, uh, there's a thing you posted on Instagram that you uh, had rode over the hood of a car, and then you commented oh. underneath that, like, 20 minutes after, you got hit by a car. So yeah. I'll find the clip. Tell us about how that happened. Like, how I got hit? Tell us about the whole, like, tell us what basically went down that day. All right, so basically, me and my friends were just riding, like, Galt, because it was, like, the one nice day in February that, like, we could actually ride. So we all rode. And then it was me, my friend Jesse, Josh, and Eric, or not Eric, uh, Ethan. And when Josh and Ethan went home, it was just me and Jesse. And, uh, so like, you know, I don't know if you've ever like came across it, but like sometimes on Instagram, you see like people like ride over cars. Yep. Oh yeah. And I just thought it was sick. I've Uh, done it. Yeah. I I felt really bad because that wasn't my car. Right. But I just did it. Uh, I'm glad it didn't break. Yeah, but you yeah. didn't dent it or anything, but definitely like would recommend doing it yeah. on a abandoned car or that's deep, why like I'm a not, shitty car. That's why I'm not doing it anymore until hey, I find like an abandoned car. But honestly, you were like yeah. 15 at this time, I would assume, and yeah. you know, kids do stupid shit, so whatever. But 
So yeah, I just thought it would be sick. Uh, originally, I wanted to do uh, like ride on it and then bar off, but like I didn't want to fall and then just like destroy their car. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and then later that day when we were heading home, we passed by like Hessler Road, and then by the Wendy's, I was like going straight, and this uh, this girl, she's like backing up out of the the uh the drive through, and she like turns around and goes to go forwards and she looks right at me and she just goes straight into me and then i just like fall like, yeah she hits like the side of me and i just fall off my bike and then i get up and she like comes out the door and she's like i'm so sorry yeah and then like i look down because her bumper is like coming off yeah and she's like no that was already there and i like i knew that wasn't already there yeah because i i just knew it wasn't there well at least and she like yeah, was she was pretty like, good about it. Yeah, yeah, she like she was nice. She uh obviously I did something to the bumper, but she just she was more worried about me. Yeah. I think she looked at me and she like didn't know that I was on a bike or something. Right. Cuz she just kind of like went straight into me, but she wasn't going fast. She was going kind of slow. And That's good though. She just like she was okay with it. She just felt really bad. Uh she actually gave me like $2 after. <laughs> That's funny. At least you got a fucking, you know, a I couple bucks paid, out I of her. I got paid to get hit by. Yeah, her. getting paid, getting paid. Yeah um yeah i remember i was hit by a car years ago and like it was just one of those stupid things that like i was waiting at this spot in the road and it's four lanes of traffic and the one side is like you can't really see and it's on one of the busiest streets in kitchener i just did not want to have to bike like a kilometer down the road to use the light so i was waiting and there was a spot where i thought that i could go through and uh I don't know. I made it all the way through. And then the last lane, this dude fucking totally just ran right into me. And I was fine. Like, cause he had hit the brakes and I knew it was going to happen. So I looked over and saw the car coming. I literally put my foot on the like hood and pushed off of it. My fucking peg went like underneath and I ended up like kind of pulling my bike out and just biking away. And the guy was fine. But like, I just felt like such an asshole, you know, yeah. like I was OK. He was fine. Car was fine. So, um, yeah, watch where you're going, kids. Yeah, I mean, most of the time, scary. Yeah. Most of the time it's unfortunate, but it's like the driver's fault. Like my aunt, she got run over by uh, somebody just like, you know, on their phone, fucking oh, texting shit. and driving. Yeah, she was on her that. bike and she like she could have fucking died. Like, I almost got hit like three weeks ago because this guy was on his phone. Yeah. And he was going pretty fast through a parking lot, and I'm going to, like, cross the parking lot. Yeah. And he's, like, going pretty fast. And he looks up, and he sees me, like, I'm, okay, so I'm, like, here, and, like, the car's, like, right here, and he looks up, and he goes to, like, slam on the brakes, and he comes, like, right here. Yeah. And I was just, like, so scared, because he was going really fucking fast. Yeah, that's rough. I almost got hit on my road bike up the street here because there's like a hill and then there's a parking lot to go into a restaurant. And somebody was passing me when I was in the bike lane and then they just turned right like super fast into this fucking lot. And I literally like hit both brakes. Yeah, I ended up going in front of them and like got away and I was fine. But like I rolled back and told the guys like, man, just look out, you know, like, yeah. I don't know whose fault it was. It was probably mine because I did see him turning, but it just, I don't know. It was so fast. I thought that he would have seen me coming up behind him. Like, um, either way. So I think we've all had that moment in our lives where, you know, we've dreamt about having our own backyard set up or our own skate park. If you could build your own backyard set up, what do you think you would have at your backyard? Honestly, I wouldn't have a lot. Yeah. I just have like, I don't know, maybe like a quarter pipe. A bank and like, uh, like maybe like a four like a or rail. five set, yeah, with a down row and a down ledge, and like maybe like one flat ledge. That's and pretty cool. Just be good. Yeah, I've always like liked the idea of just having like a small setup like that. Um, but whenever I think about like actually having like a ramp setup, I always think you know like I can go and ride like a ledge in most places. I want something that like you know we don't have around here oh, and we don't true. have any like actual good spines where was know? that half pipe you like jumped off oh, the roof um that's my buddy's place in baden dude that was such a sick clip like, yeah i was hyped on that the footage makes it look a lot smaller which i was kind of sad about but it is like, like how the fuck did you jump off the roof dude it was so steep like literally you're up there and like 
if you lift your foot, like you're going in. Like what there's gave no you that idea. Um, we showed up and we kind of joked around about it. And Dan was telling me that like it would be cool to jump up onto the roof. And like you know, I was saying like you know you'd need like a box jump and like a vert wall so that you could hit the like you know vert wall and then come straight at it with as much speed as you can. And then we kind of looked at it and. Uh, he has a spot where, like, his ramp doesn't meet the fence, and you can, like, just bike right through it. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I was just looking at it, and I was like, well, I've dropped, like, way higher things than that. Like, you know, realistically, I could have went probably another three, four feet up into it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. We were just like, well, let's fucking break out the ladder and take a look. <laughs> like, if it works, it works. And, yeah, we took the ladder out. And I was up there for like 20 minutes just, just looking at it. at it. Yeah. yeah, just trying to figure it out because I like to always overanalyze it and just know what the options are, especially when you're like you're landing and you're either going to go towards another quarter pipe or hit a fence, right? And then like – or you're going to land in the grass and go perfectly in between these. And uh, yeah, the first one I landed and looped out. And, like, went right into the side of the yeah, half pipe. That. And then... I thought you just, like, smashed your face. No, I was fine. And then the second one, I just, like, literally ran up the ladder with my bike, like, up on my shoulder. Fucking climbed up, set my bike up, and just did it right there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was, like, I had such a hard time actually going for it until I literally was, like, all right, well... I'm just going to start counting down because if I don't do it when I get to one, I'm going to look like a giant fucking pussy. <laughs> so, yeah, I fucking just like, all right, five, four, three, two, one. And, and then set my foot it. on and fucking went down and, yeah, That's pretty pulled much it on the I second one. Riverside. Like, yeah. I was on the roof for like 40 minutes. Just like I was just staring at it. Like I wasn't saying anything. I was just staring at yeah. the, the landing and I was just like. I was counting down, and I'm like, okay, right here, I'm going to do it, and I did it. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's actually, it's about the same height as the one that you did at Riverside, except it's into a quarter pipe, and for me, that's my, like, switch drop-in. Oh, shit. Yeah, so it's like, that's already pretty gnarly, but... Spooky. I wanted to do a trick into it. Like, I thought about doing, like, a nollie, like, that would be nuts, or, like, a, you know, like a T-bog, that would be crazy, but both of those would be, like... You know, if you don't catch your fucking hand right, especially when you're yeah. dropping in, like, oof. Dude, I have just a really jumping that is scary. Yeah. Man. It was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. It was honestly like one of my favorite things I've done on a bike. So I'm hyped on it. Um Yeah, so uh in this post you say that you had had your worst crash, but there's no video and you don't really talk about it. Um I'm gonna pull it up. Tell us what happened here. Alright. So Wait, which post? Uh, it's a post where you have, oh, there it is right here. So what oh. is going on here? There's just a bunch of blood on some steps. It looks like I remember this. Yeah. So I was, uh, riding down King street, like near where I live, you know, that like big ass hill by Tim Hortons. Yep. So I was riding down that and it was on like my first BMX and my chain snapped. Oh as I my God. To help, and I just like. Went, went right over, over the bars, the bars probably, like, yeah. And I slid on my face, like, maybe two meters. Yeah. And, like, half my face, like, this half of my face was, like, gone. Oh, my God. Like, yeah. My eye was, like, bleeding. Jesus. Um, like, I had this huge, like, bump, like, here. Yeah. Like, I had a helmet on, but, like, I don't know why. It just, it didn't help. Like It definitely helped. It helped, like. Yeah, it helped, but, like. Yeah. It's just, like, my face was still gone. And I had this bump, Oof. like, right on, like, my eyebrow. Yeah, and no then, thanks. Like, I had this huge like scratch from here to like here. It was oh so fucked. I lost like three teeth. Jesus, actually, eh? Yeah, I have like. Three... Do you have fake teeth? Yeah, I have like a couple fake teeth. Nice, you and me, man. We got fake teeth up yeah, in here. Dude. This is crazy. Um, yeah, that's fucking scary, dude. That's always my worst fear is like you know the chain snapping. Yeah, that's I've still caught it a couple times fear. where like I've literally cranked and like the fucking chain snaps and you know like typically you just go straight over the bars but if you know that it's going to happen or if you have a feeling you can kind of be ready for it and i literally like one time pedaled and it lifted my front end up off the ground and i literally like set it back down and i was fine but yeah that's never happened to me it's always been if my chain snaps i go face first yeah right like still to this day i'm scared like if my if my chain snaps 
I'm yeah, I always just die. listen and like I also just test my chain. Like I'll check like every two weeks, just you know, pedal backwards and do, check like, each thing. Yeah. Every time I get home, when I like whenever I clean my bike, I just look at my chain, make sure the links aren't like broken. And yeah, like, nothing's popping out. It's also good just to like you know, if you're not riding like a good brand of chain, to just go out, spend the money. Like that's why I only ride like half links. Cause yeah, I've always snapped full links. Like I've snapped half links too, but like. I always found full links are scarier for me. Yeah, I had a really nice eclat half link that had like cuts in all the links. I broke that one real fast. Like oh, which sucked. It was a really nice chain, but yeah, it broke really quickly. Yeah, right now I have like a cult chain. Nice. That's it's what actually, I'm riding. It's really nice. It's yeah. pretty beefy. Hell yeah. Shout out to Robbo at Cult. You are the fucking homie, man. Um Yeah, let's see here. So would you ever consider doing pedal every day? So pedal every day, for those who don't know, is uh, it's a challenge where you basically just post a clip on Instagram every single day of you riding. Um, you don't have to post it on Instagram, but you do have to pedal a bike for you know five minutes a day every day. So yeah, my buddy Brayden Hansen, he came on the show recently, and he's been doing it for over a year now. And he's out in Stratford, and his riding has really progressed. And I feel like you're kind of already at that level where you're already pretty much doing pedal every day, you know? Yeah, I pretty much already do that, but, like, I would do it. The only thing that, like, I would hate about it is the winter. Because I ride a lot in the winter because uh, whenever the weather's good in the winter, I ride as hard as I can. Like, yeah, that's why I full cab the Market 7 because I want to do it. But like you also don't get the chance to really ride, right? Yeah, like if I if I think about doing something in the winter, I want to do it like as fast as I can so I can get it done. Like in the summer, like if I wanted to do the the, the full cab this summer, I probably would have ended up like bitching out on it because I knew I could just be like, oh yeah, I'll just come back another day and then not do it. Like in the winter, I was dedicated. Like I had to bike all the way there, and I like. I told myself, I'm like, I need to do this because I didn't want to have to, like, bike there just for nothing. Yeah. So when did you think about full cabbing it in the first place? I guess we never really talked about that. I wasn't sure if um, you literally just biked there and just thought of it on the spot or if it was something no. that was in your mind. So basically, um, I think the edit was called, like, Vans, like, Shimmer or something. And it was Lewis Mills part. Oh, He did, nice. like, a full cab truck down this huge set. And I wanted to do that, but, like, I couldn't truck. But I yeah. just wanted to do the full cab because it looked sick. And I'm like, I want to do it down a big set. So I started like, I started on a three stair, went to a four stair, and then I just took it straight to the seven because I like that's really want to get fucking it. Fucking nuts, yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much how I got it. I just Lewis Mills, he's a crazy rider. Yeah, he's nuts, man. I have to get a hold of him. I messaged him a few weeks ago, but like, it's hard whenever you get a lot of these pros that are really big on Instagram because yeah. You know, you they, send like, them a DM. Off or whatever. Yeah, they can't really receive messages. Like, there's some people where I've been like, how the fuck do you have your messages open? <laughs> like, how are you getting back to me right now? This is ridiculous. Like, you have 100K followers. Like, Dude, I was like Dunham Cox. I messaged him yeah. one time. And, like, he, he responded within five minutes. And I was just like, what the hell? How the fuck did yeah, he dude. respond? Yeah, dude. He's like, yeah, he's unreal. He's such his a nice hangers. dude, too. Yeah, his hangers are nuts. Um, yeah, he's seriously, like, one of the best dudes out there that's why know? he's one of my favorite riders like my favorite riders are like so denim cox is number one because his hangers are fucking insane yeah um lewis mills because i love his style and stevie churchill because he just like trucks every big drop he finds did you ever watch uh stevie's roll call part from dance comp um I think I might have. I don't really know. I, I don't. I've watched a lot of edits, so I don't really know. I'll have to show you that video part after this. He is nuts, dude. And this is back when, like, I don't know if you knew this, but there were some rumors out there that uh, Stevie was on steroids back then. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know the truth. I've heard from a lot of people that that is what was going on. I'm not gonna sit here and say that that is what was happening because I just don't know. But um, yeah, his videos were fucking nuts like that dude was unreal he's still unreal to this day but you could yeah. tell that he was like young and fucking hungry he was doing like you know, sevens was, off yeah. of things like he's fucking crazy yeah he wanted to make a name for himself for sure like, like he, honestly if like i don't know if he's already tried it but he could probably like seven el toro like i believe he could do it 
Yeah, there's always been that rumor that he three whipped El Toro, and like apparently he's tried and he's just never got it. But I'll, I'll I don't know. know if he's ever three whipped it. I think a lot of people had heard the rumor that you know after he trucked it, him and Brandon Began were gonna session it, and like and then so he that's it. the thing he trucked it, and then Began half cabbed it. Now, had Began landed it, I think the next trick that Stevie had in mind was to three whip it, which is like he's done three whips down like you know yeah, ten like his, twelve uh, stairs, like yeah, yeah, he could definitely pull that for sure, yeah, I don't know, that's fucking like just so wild, like in his um on some shit edit, yeah, uh, he did like a three whip down, I don't know how many stairs, but it's it was like a twelve stair, yeah. yeah, it's nuts, like, I'm he's like so fucked. Yeah, nobody's doing three whips down shit. Like, when it comes to street, at least. Like, you don't see people doing three whips. Yeah. It's probably just a really scary trick. Like, I can't tail whip, but, like, just to fly out tail whip is scary for me. But, like, I can imagine doing it on a drop and 360 and two, like, that's just fucked. Yeah, I've tried three whips into foam pits a couple times, and I've gotten very close. Oh, shit. And one of the things that, like, you know, whenever I do them, I go as high as I can. And it's really weird because, you know, you start spinning and you throw that whip and it honestly doesn't feel too crazy. Like you would think that there's so much going on, but like as long as you can kind of find your bike again, I think the big part is that like you have to spin super fast at first. Like you want to be whipping and threeing like, you know, you want to have your whip completed before you do a 180, basically, yeah. because you want to be able to catch the bike and just spin the rest of the way. Yeah, like when Stevie does it, he does like 180 catch. Um, yeah, like 180. The other 180. Yeah. Yeah, it's so wild. Um, yeah, this has been awesome so far, man. So thank you for coming in today. We're going to play a couple games here. So uh, we're going to do overrated, underrated. This is basically where... I will name off three different things, and if you can come up with a couple things for me, um, basically, you know, just tell me if it's overrated or if it's underrated and why. So uh, I kind of I wanted to, you know, play around with this a little bit, um, especially with the first one here. So this one I wanted to bring up because you're a younger dude and you've never really had access to BMX magazines, I would assume. So no. BMX magazines, overrated or underrated? They're underrated. Yeah, I would I would agree. Like. They're one of those things that, like, you know, when I was in high school... Like, not a lot of people have them, because, like, they don't really, like... Most people nowadays are just like, oh, yeah, let's just pull up a edit on, like, YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, when I was in high school, that's, like, what I would read all the time. Like, whenever, you know, you'd finish something early, and they're like, all right, just read a book. I would just pull out a fucking BMX yeah. magazine and be sitting there reading that. Um, so, next one, flat ledge clips. What do you think? Overrated or underrated? Um... I don't really know, honestly. Yeah, I think it depends on the clip, right? Like, yeah. I think most of the time they're a little overrated. If I would if it's like a Smith nose bar, I'd say it's overrated because like yeah, everyone does everybody those, does those. But it's like it's a sick trick. But here's the thing: if a Smith nose bar was done on a fucking up ledge, totally underrated. Yeah, totally underrated on a down ledge, underrated. It's just one of those things that everybody does that trick on. You know. Flat ledge. Like a flat ledge. But like if it's on like an up ledge or down ledge. Yeah. Has it ever been done on a down ledge? Oh, that's, for sure. Yeah, it's been done. That's kind of that's kind of scary. Like if you yeah. miss the catch, you're fucking. Oh, you're done for. You're, that's you're for gonna sure. Do what I did to my knee. Yeah. So uh, flat ground riding. So flatland. You know, not a lot of people do it. And uh, do you know? Is it because flat ground is corny, or is it because it's so fucking hard? That people don't do it. Overrated or underrated? What do you think? Uh, probably underrated because, like, not a lot of people do it, but it's, it's like, really sick at the same time. I, I don't do it because it's uh, really hard, but, like, if I could, that'd be, that'd be sick. I've definitely experimented in the last six months with learning, like, a lot of flat ground tricks, and it's fucking hard, dude. It is so ridiculous. And, like, the thing with Flatland, too, is that, I almost feel like you need a totally different setup yeah, just like for, like, yeah, flatland. Yeah. Like, you need, like, all four brakes. You need, like, special pedals. And yeah. Like grippy pegs. Because, like, you go, like, I don't know. There's, like, places, like, I think in Japan, you, like, see people on the streets just, like, spinning around on their bike, and it's fucking crazy. 
Yeah, I think uh, with flat ground, there's really not a lot of people doing it, right? And, like, it's one of those things that there's, like, unlimited options for it because you can go, like, anywhere. Like, if I wanted to learn flat flatland, I could bike 200 feet and be at the, like, outside hockey arena here that's drained right now and just, you know, yeah, you ride a flatland. Like set up and just ride. Yeah, I definitely... Uh, I want to get into Flatland a little bit more. Like, I'm learning flat ground decades right now, which is where oh, you shit. like. Those are sick. Yeah, you, you hit like, the. Walk over your bike. Like, basically, so yeah. You do like, you know, front brake to rear brake, and then you do full 360 on the front of the bike yeah. with the bars. Um, and then uh, I don't know what the trick is called, but you stand on your back peg, and it's like one of those basic flat ground tricks where you basically stand on the back peg just and you like just start around. rotating. I yeah. Mean, that's called like a. Flat spin, something like that. I, I know it's. I don't know why, like but I feel like it's called a hitchhiker, and I don't think it is. I think that's be. a I don't know. different trick. Because when I first started riding, I tried flatland, and I tried to do that back peg thingy, and I was told it was called a flat spin or like Probably. a mega spin, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I can get like 720 on them typically. Oh shit! Which I can't is pretty good. A, I can't even get past a three. Like it's so weird. Yeah, it's a weird balance point where your bike needs to be like tipped at like a 70 degree angle yeah. so that you're like still spinning but you're also up on top of it it's really hard man um cool so do you got anything that you would like to ask me for overrated underrated or nah um if you can think of anything manual clips manual clips oh that's a good one actually um that's tough because there's multiple different like manual clips right like there's the ones where you've got a manual that links everything and i think that's always really good like if yeah. you can get somebody that does you know like bar to feeble manual to like smith hard 180 half cab down a set of stairs yeah that's unreal yeah but that's if it's like sick. if it's pegs manual all the way over to the other ledge pegs and then come off it's kind of like okay that's still pretty cool because yeah. you did link them but it's just the same it would be trick. yeah that's the thing it's one of those things where it's a very similar trick i would love to see like more variety thrown in there yeah yeah and like manuals i think only when it's like you know linking something where it's not that great but if it was like just a manual like down a down ledge love it that shit is like one of my favorite tricks and i suck at it but yeah manuals are pretty rad i do like them so i would say Probably underrated, but with a specific few being very, very, very overrated. Yeah. Um, cool. Let's see. So, uh, would you rather? Would you rather ride a cassette for a year um, or no pegs for a year? Um, That's tough, eh? Yeah, that is tough. Uh, probably a cassette. Yeah? Cause Fair like, enough. I don't know. I just... You're a peg I guy. I miss my cassette. Yeah. I yeah. Like pegs. I think you can still do a lot of the tricks that you could do now with a cassette. Whereas, like, you take pegs off, and it's a whole new game. Like, because yeah, if I ride a cassette, like, the only trick I probably won't be doing is, like, fakie bars. Like, I can still five on a cassette and all that. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, fair enough. Good point, man. Um, so, let's see. Would you rather never ride a ledge again, but be unreal with rail tricks, or never ride rails, but be unreal with ledge tricks? Ooh. Um... That's tough because they're so similar, right? Like probably never ride a rail because, like, I kind of just like don't like rail clips. I just like ledge clips. They just look cooler, in my opinion. Fair enough. Because you can you can kind of do more because it's like wider. Like you have more space on top. But, like I don't know. It just looks that's a cooler. good point. I also think you're a little biased only because yeah. you recently <laughs> fucking lost your ability to have children. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking lost my kids. <laughs> oh fuck all right um would you rather land that roof drop you tried at riverside but get sacked on the up rail or land the up rail but you ate it on the roof drop oh fuck um that's tough eh because they both sucked like both really hurt mm, that's a hard one um probably the roof drop <laughs> Cool. Honestly, because yeah. it was such a sick clip, and if I had gotten it, I would have been so hyped. Like, Fair the enough. up rail, I was 
I was just going for an up rail like I was just going for a peg ZZ. Like, yeah, I, I could do that like on like any up rail. Yeah, very except fair. for that one. <laughs> yeah, good point, man. Um, cool. So we got a couple fan questions here, and then I got one more for you, and then we'll uh, we'll end it off there, and hopefully we can go biking. Is it what? It is. Uh, it is wet. Oh shit! <laughs> so I guess we'll figure out if we can go ride or not. Maybe. Um, so, uh, what's your favorite clip that you have ever filmed? This is Dylan Steele asking. Um, I don't really have one. Um, probably. I can't believe yeah, you're not saying that full know. cab, dude. That full cab is nuts. Okay, probably the full cab or um. The three down the seven. Like, That's a good point. Yeah. Same same trick except the same stair set. Backwards yeah. Three. Yeah, it blows my mind that you full cabbed it before you threed it. Yeah, because like, I couldn't three down things. Yeah. So I just threed it backwards. That's funny. Oh man. Um, Spencer asks, "How are you riding with a broken rib?" Um. So, so it's not like broken apart. It's just kind of like cracked, and it's the bottom. So it's like a ribs. fracture. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It hurts sometimes. I try not to fall unless I do an up row, but like I try not to fall because it hurts like a lot if I fall. Yeah. But I'm just trying to ignore the pain because I don't want to be out for the summer. Yeah, that's a really good point, man. Um, especially with the jam coming up this weekend. Yeah, I, I know you've been really excited for that. So, yeah, it's going to be a good day, man. I'm excited to have uh, – there's going to be some new blood. Like, honestly, the last couple of years have all been, like, older dudes, which is rad. But to have, like, you know – because I don't think Aaron came out last year or, like, any of those younger dudes. So to get them out to this jam is going to be really cool. I think they're going to enjoy it. Yourself, obviously, you're going to have yeah. a good time. You'll finally be able to find Market – or not Market, uh, <laughs> Red, Red Brick. Brick. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, finally. Um, so – this one is from uh, one of our listeners who listens typically almost every week. Um, Mason Patrick, how you doing, man? Thank you. Um, he is asking, when did you switch to four-piece bars? And are you riding four-piece bars right now? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. Um, so I switched like... It was a while ago. It was when I got my Sunday. Um, yeah. Like, cause, actually, you know, it was before that. Because when I had the hutch... Um, it had two piece and I, like, I've never really liked the way two piece looks. Um, I just like the look of four piece. And when I went to the bike shop, like, cause there used to be one on King street. Um, and there was like some stranger four piece bars. Uh, those are the ones I have on my bike right now. And I like, I got them and I kept riding them and they just, I like the way it looked. They didn't really feel different, but I just liked the way they look. Hell Yeah. Um, yeah, that's kind of why you buy four piece bars, right? Like, yeah, like there's like no difference. Yeah. Um, Harvester Bikes asks, how many pairs of camo pants do you own? And, uh, Johnny, how about you just stand up over there and show oh, yeah. us your wonderful camo pants at the moment? Yeah, look, I got the camo pants on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> He's set. Um, yeah, great question from Harvester there. How many pairs of camo pants do you own? Um, I only have like, honestly, I only have like three pairs. That's pretty good though <laughs> yeah i got i got a good three pairs are still three pairs yeah i just like the way they look they look cool you and uh sean should totally wear the same fucking pants or like you know camos in different colors yeah but like wear the same color top as the other person's pants i think that'd be hilarious <laughs> just like a mismatch yeah oh man um eli wants to know oppo or regular grinds what do you prefer to do and what do you prefer to see um well, for me, I prefer to do regular, but my regular is my oppo. Like, I learn grinds on the right, but I should be doing them on the left. So when I feeble hard, I grind on the left. So it's like switch, but it's actually my – it's all confusing. It's my yeah. regular. But I prefer regular because it just feels comfortable. Um, but to see, I like to see – I like to see switch grinds because it's just like – it's different. Right. And it just looks cool. Yeah, I think switch grinds always look pretty crazy. Like, I'm the same way where I'm dick-footed when I grind. So in order to do, like, you know, a feeble hard 180, it's, like, extra hard because yeah, I have to, to opposite have to spin. Switch. Yeah, and, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, 
I don't know. I like the way that I do grinds, though. Like, I like being dick-footed because it does come in handy when you're doing, like, specific tricks, you know? Like, any 180 out of, like, a grind is super easy yeah, like, unless for it's me, a smith. Like, easy ones are, like, chillers for me. Like, everyone, when they see me do one, they're like, how do you do that so easy? And I'm like, oh, it's just my regular. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and Sir Cultley asks, I can't 180. Do you have any tips? So this kid is pretty young. Um, shout out for you to you. This is the first time you've asked asked a question on the show. So let's give him some pointers on how to do a one eighty. Um, well, definitely watch like a few how tos. Yeah, that ask will help me. I think um, a, if you're gonna do it, I'd say try and do it out of a bank or like a fly out because you don't have to hop. Um, and just go like a medium speed and just like start turning your head, start doing like nineties. Yeah. And then, well, you got to, like, make sure you can fakey first. So make sure you got, like, your fakies to unlock. Um, and then just keep spinning 90 and then keep trying to go more than 90 and you, you'll probably get it. Because that's how, it, that's how it worked for me. Yeah, I think a big thing is, like, you know. Oh, and pull hard. Yeah, pull hard. Yeah, and fucking. Use your hips. Yeah, turn your head and that'll turn your shoulders and then that'll turn your hips. Yeah. And that'll turn everything, right? Look you got to look land. where you want to go. And don't stop looking. That's something that yeah. a lot of people do when they're like, you know, learning 180s. Yeah, they'll they get look, to 90 look, and, then yeah. they'll and, then and then they'll look straight and they won't go anymore. And just yeah. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good point. Um, so yeah, Johnny, this has been amazing. Thank you for coming in today. You have been a requested guest on the show, so uh, good to finally have you in. Um, yeah, we got one last question for you. So, what is your advice to progressing quickly in BMX? Um, honestly, just fully commit to everything. Uh, watch a bunch of edits. It'll get you inspired. Uh, when you're trying something you've never tried, like something really scary, don't think about falling. Just think about how, like, think about the feeling of you landing it and how good it'll be. And just don't be scared to get hurt because it's going to happen no matter what. Hell yeah. That's a, that's honestly some really good, like, points in there, especially that last one, because, if you're afraid of falling in BMX and you don't want to fall, yeah, you're I'm sorry, man, best. but this is not the, it's like, not your sport. yeah, this is not the thing for you. Like get into something else, you know, cause BMX, skateboarding, scootering, all of these, you go like into it knowing that you're going to get hurt and that you are 100% going to get really fucking hurt at one point. Yeah. Like anytime I get on my bike, I have fully accepted the chances that I could, you know, go out and break my fucking leg. I don't want to do that. I don't want that to happen at all. But, you know, there's realistically, a there's a chance it could happen. So you need to know that that could happen. Jesus. Is it, like, is that thunder? thunder? <laughs> yeah, it's raining out there. Oof, oh, that is rough, man. Well, we'll watch a couple edits and fucking hang out for a bit at least. Right. Um, cool. Johnny, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show today. This has been awesome. Anytime. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. Props to you. I'm hyped to see you fucking killing it on a bike, man, honestly. And, like... I fully mean it when I say that, like, if you stick to what you've been doing now and you just progress more and more and more, and if you don't have that spot where you just start to really slow down, like, you know, it's more or less just about, like, how much effort you're willing to put in. Yeah. I think that you could fully be, like, pro within a couple of years. Not pro, but, like, you'd be picked up by a company yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. We're, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Come out to the jam. Um, it's going to be a rad time. So, yeah, we'll uh, see you later. Peace.